It's been a good day. And if I was to say we've had enough, <laughs> I don't mean that negatively. We've had enough. It has been sufficient. It has been good and, and whole. It's been lovely to come somewhere where the legitimacy of the project, which inquires of concrete realities, theological questions, and asks of theological realities, concrete secular questions, is accepted. We can do it. We can ask proper questions of the church in terms of, of organizational theory and design, and we can ask um, organizational questions also of our theological realities and see how they work and fit in. That's been refreshing. One, one reflection overall, um, and I'll leave it, leave it with this, and that is I've been struck by the similarity between the research, the methodology of research, and the importance of research, and change itself. They impact on each other. And so we had a, a fascinating presentation on the Eden Project. And there's a project that I think is changed by, very, by the act of looking at it in some sort of form of social sciences, quantum mechanics. You look at it and it is changed. But everything I sense that we do, when you notice it, when you bother to attend to what is happening, what is happening changes in ways that are often positive and good. Because an awful lot of accompanying organisation through change or change management, however people talk about it, has this immensely important change management, um, relational pastoral care element to it. It's about people. It's about communities. It's fundamentally about love and how we engage with people and allow them to shine and be the people that God wants them to be, and how we strive ourselves, by God's grace, to become those people. Somebody mentioned um, bereavement in, in their experience, that the loss, and we've talked a little bit about anger, and certainly in my own experience as both a researcher and somebody who's been involved in accompanying organizations through change, is the visceral dimension of change. And I have, um, on occasion, stopped my tape recorder, put it down and said, can we talk about this off the record? <laughs> because the person was so angry or so distressed, because what was going on and, and that what they seen felt so huge and big for them. And in some of the management of change material, you'll come across the writings of people like Kubler-Ross, Death and Dying. And I just want to end with that as a thought as both a research thing, how do you pay attention to people in a way that treats them as people and, and considers them and gives voice to people who might not otherwise be heard? But how also, if your business is accompanying others through change, how can you understand what's going on? And I think seeing it as something of loss in order that change may occur is really helpful. One of the books that I was drawn to during my period as a hospice chaplain was William Warden's Grief Process, um, Tasks of Grieving. And I, I look at that, and I look at the way, for example, the church uh, tries to help change happen. So uh, William Warden will talk about uh, coming to the, uh, understand the reality of loss. He will talk about expressing the feelings associated with loss. He'll talk about how you need to accommodate to a world without the person who has died. And then he says those tasks need to happen before you can re-engage with affection in something else. And I look at how uh, a Methodist minister like I am would encourage a church uh, to get used to having not, not getting having pews anymore. And you'd say, aren't the pews rubbish? How wonderful the new chairs will be. Won't it be exciting we've got a lovely looking church that's nearly as modern and plush as the Baptists down the road? And, you would do exactly the opposite of what you would do. If you, if you faced a bereavement visit like that, you'd be saying, well, we know Uncle Bert's died, but he was a bit of a rogue. Nobody really liked him, and it'd be a great relief. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's just, just think what you can do with all the, the things that he had that you can now have. And, you, and, and won't it be nice when we have a, a, a much younger uncle to come into our lives? <laughs> <laughs> It just wouldn't work, because if you want to accompany somebody through the visceral dimension of change, it's pastoral, it's care. And I, you know, sometimes have joked, you need a funeral service for pews. You need to say, from these very seats, people were married. From here, you 
were, were able to find the, the, the good news of Jesus Christ. And this place was where you saw your, your beloved parents, their funerals. This, this is precious. And isn't it sad it's got to go? And it's only when you acknowledge and express and give space. I, I don't agree that anger would disappear if change was managed properly. Anger is what happens through loss. And it's our business as researchers who are part of that process of change and also as managers of change or leaders in change to sense that pastoral dimension and to understand that it's always first beginning and end about people and therefore it's about paying attention and listening carefully and understanding quite as much as anything else that might go on. So, I would of a preacher end by saying, I can't help feeling that our business, our whole business, with research into organisation and particularly looking at change, is always going to be fundamentally and at core about the love of God, which changes us from one degree of glory to another.